In this lecture, we are going to look at machine learning based trading in code. This lecture is going to walk you through a prepared Colab notebook, although a very good exercise, which I always recommend, is once you know how this is done, to try and recreate it yourself with as few references as possible. As always, you can check the lectures, how to code by yourself, and how to practice for a more in depth discussion. If there's anything in this lecture you didn't understand, or you think I missed a step, or didn't explain why we were doing something, please use the Q&A to inquire. As usual, you can look at the title of the notebook to determine what notebook we are currently looking at. So let's start by downloading our data set. Unlike the trend following script, we will need more than just the SPY prices. As you recall, we'll be using past returns of the components of SPY to predict SPY. Again, I want to mention that the number of things you could use to predict SPY are exponentially large. In fact, even with just this data set, there are a lot of things you could try. Okay, so next, let's import pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Next, let's read in our CSV using pd.readCSV. Next, let's call df.head to remind ourselves what's inside our data frame. As you recall, we have the close prices of various stocks from the S&P lined up by date. Next, we're going to drop any rows in which all the values are missing. So we call drop na with axis equals zero, and we say how equals all. Next, let's check df.shape to see how many points we have. Next, we're going to remove any columns with missing values. This is just so we don't have to bother with forward filling or backward filling. To do this, we call drop na with axis equals one, and we'll say how equals any. Next, when we check df.shape again, we see that about 50 stocks have been removed. Next, we can call isNA as a sanity check to make sure that there are no more missing values. Next, we're going to create a new data frame containing only returns. This will have the same structure as our existing data frame, but it'll contain returns instead of prices. So first we start by creating an empty data frame. We'll call this DF returns. Next, we loop through each name in df columns. Inside the loop, we'll assign the log return to df returns under the same column name. Next, let's call the head function to remind ourselves what our data frame will look like. As you can see, the first row is all null. Next, we're going to shift the SPY returns back by one step. As you recall, this is so that we have all the inputs and targets along the same row. If we do a df.tail, we should see that now the last value is missing. Okay, so the next step is to split our data into train and test. Since the first row has missing values, we'll skip the first row for the train set. Since the last row has missing values, we'll skip the last row for the test set. Okay, so next, we're going to select which stocks we want to use as our input features. As mentioned in the theory lecture, I simply chose a few stocks that have the highest market cap. Alternatively, you could try using all the columns, except obviously SPY itself. Okay, so we'll call this list X calls. Next, we're going to create our X's and Y's for building and testing our machine learning models. X is the data frame indexed by X calls, and Y is the data frame indexed by SPY. Next, let's call xtrain.head as a sanity check to make sure everything looks okay. All right, so everything looks fine. Next, let's call ytrain.head to make sure everything looks okay there too. 
All right, so everything looks fine. Next, let's create our model. As mentioned, we'll start by using linear regression. We call model.fit to fit the model on the train set. Then we call model.score on both the train and test set to evaluate how close our model gets to predicting the target. As you can see, the scores are quite low. A perfect score would be 1, and predicting the average value would be 0. You can think of that as like the naive prediction. So perfect gives you 1, and naive gives you 0. For the train set, we are only slightly above the naive prediction. For the test set, since we get a negative value, we are actually doing worse than the naive prediction. Nonetheless, this won't stop us from just seeing how the model performs. Okay, so recall that we don't actually care about the value of the prediction, just whether it's positive or negative. Recall that if it's positive, then we want to buy, and if it's negative, then we want to sell. So we can obtain predictions from the model by calling model.predict. This will give us ptrain and ptest. Next, we can check the accuracy of ptrain and ptest by taking the sign. So when we call the sign function, this converts the array into plus one if the argument is positive and minus one if the argument is negative. If we do this for both the predictions and targets, we get arrays of plus ones and minus ones. Then we check where they are equal, which will give us an array of booleans. Finally, we take the mean of the boolean array to get the classification accuracy. As you can see, for both the train and test set, we perform slightly higher than chance. Since there are only two possible outcomes, the expected result of making random predictions is 50%. Now, one subtlety about the sign function is that if the argument is zero, we will get zero instead of plus one or minus one. Therefore, it's possible to have three values instead of two. So in this next block, I've casted p train and p test to a set to see how many unique values we have. Luckily, they do not contain any zeros. Okay, so the next step is to create a new column in our data frame called position, which will tell us whether or not we are invested. For the train indices, we assign the Boolean array P train greater than zero. That is, if P train is greater than zero, we'll assign true, otherwise we'll assign false. Next, we do the same thing for the test indices and p-test. Next, we multiply the position column by the SPY column to get the algo return. Next, we sum up all the values corresponding to the train set to see how well our model performs. So we get about 55% log return. Next, we sum up all the values corresponding to the test set. We get about 30% log return. Next, let's compare this against buy and hold. So for the train set, that's ytrain.sum. So we get 59% log return, which is better than the machine learning approach. For the test set, we use ytest.sum. We get 19%, which is worse than the machine learning approach. So the machine learning approach outperforms buy and hold on the test set for this time period and this model.